I'm David Ainsworth, Head of Communications at the United Nations Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. In today's SBI4 Biodiversity Beat interview, we're talking with Ingrid Kotzia, who's the Director of Biodiversity, Nature and Health at Ikle City's Biodiversity Center. Ingrid, welcome. Thank you very much, and it's amazing to be back here in Nairobi amongst all this beautiful nature. Great. It is a lovely venue, it mm, is. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit now about the commitments that cities are making. We've got this Global Biodiversity Framework, the Biodiversity Plan, and cities are an important part of it. What are cities doing to help this get implemented? Well, David, you will remember that in Montreal, cities made this big commitment to implement the Plan of Action that was adopted in Montreal and to demonstrate to the parties in the world out there that they are committed to contributing to the Global Biodiversity Framework and its many targets. And we have in the past, not even two years, managed to get more than 300 cities um, committed to the platform and they've started um, capturing their commitments and their actions. So, for example, we have uh, cities like Nagoya, who have um, included various commitments around uh, other effective conservation measures where they're involving uh, local communities, they're creating urban forests to bring nature back into cities. Um, Mexico City is another example. Uh, in Mexico City, uh, they're working together also with stakeholders and citizens around restoring ecosystems. Um, they've got amazing plans in place, etc. Montreal, which was where we had our last COP, has done incredible work as well. Um, they've committed to planting something in excess of 500,000 trees um, and to develop some work along the coastal area as well. And in Africa too, we have some awesome examples. Um, my own city of Cape Town is focusing on its waterways. These are, up till now, they've been very polluted. Um, and there are issues around access of, of vulnerable communities. So the city has committed to restoring and um, regenerating its waterways and creating better access for vulnerable communities. Um, and these are just one of, of several of, of many, many examples that we are seeing. And there's this great mobilization among cities and regions. I know, for example, uh, the province of Quebec has also done some amazing work and they're going to be doing some great announcements uh, at the COP in, in Cali later this year. It's impressive. So the number of cities is impressive, but also as you go through these examples, they seem to span uh, the, the goals and various targets of the, uh, the framework, which yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, and we're seeing that it's not just in terms of Target 12. Obviously, there's a lot of work happening in cities around Target 12, which is green and blue open spaces. Uh, but it goes beyond that, you know, it's uh, a lot of the, the so-called 30 by 30 targets, the, the mainstreaming target. Um, there's also a lot of work in terms of developing biodiversity strategies and action plans. For example, we've recently, um, and we're going to be announcing that uh, Dar es Salaam in Tanzania has going to be the first Tanzania Tanzanian city to develop a local biodiversity strategy and action plan. And in South Africa, a small district municipality is also bringing out uh, an LBSAP, which is aligned with the national, the revised national biodiversity strategy and action plan. Wow. So the work that cities are doing actually goes beyond the work under the convention. It, it crosses other conventions. Because I'm struck that we, you have this Journeys for Life initiative, and this looks at the protection of migratory species. Yes. Which is, you know, the convention of migratory species work. Tell us about that. Absolutely. That's a very exciting new initiative that's come out. Um, through ICLE and we're working with a lot of cities um, around the world. Uh, for example, we have a city in Iran that has indicated interest. We have Abu Dhabi in the United Am Emirates, Arusha also in Tanzania, where cities have come to the fore and said they are, many of these cities are located along migratory routes, whether these are fly paths or for example, where whales and sharks pass. And they're interested in finding out more about ecological connectivity and how they can, through their actions and their decisions and their policies, can support the parties in protecting migratory species as well. So this is an initiative that we launched at the uh, Convention of Migratory Species COP earlier this year. And we're working closely with that uh, convention to make sure that we choose and select the correct species 
um, and then we're working, as I said, we're working with our cities and, and the regions around the world and we're hoping to make some further announcements about this uh, at Carly later this year as well. Well, that's great. So it looks like we'll have uh, a need for another conversation at COP16. So uh, thanks already for coming here and it's, it's great to see all this great energy. Thank you so much and cities and regions remain committed to biodiversity and ecosystem protection. Thanks. There you have it. Thank you.